the name of Jesus, good morning. morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord, and we pray his blessing upon us as we gather around his word and his meal. Happy Father's Day. Um, We've been having some technical difficulties with our Facebook pages, and so we've been trying to fiddle with that a little bit. And a couple weeks ago on D-Day, I filmed a moment of silence and we got 300 hits on that. If I could just get myself out of the picture, we do great, huh? Uh, then uh, Friday, Jeff and I said, well, let's do something with a message. And we filmed a couple of them and finally put one up. And we forgot to say that we were doing our hymn sings in July. So the other versions had July in it. The one that's up doesn't. It's in the notes now, so uh, we are planning uh, to try and do some of those uh, hymns on Saturday evening in July. So if that's something that interests you, uh, you can talk to Jeff or I about bringing an instrument or your voice, and that would be great. Um, We want to add to our prayers the Heike family on the passing of uh, Dale Heike down in Arizona. Uh, 82, you said he was? So, um, and uh, this past week, uh, our uh, church secretary, Lori Jessen, uh, took a vacation for the first time in five years. And yesterday she tested positive for COVID. Uh, never doing that again. No. So, uh, she worked ahead for this week, so we were able to get things covered. But uh, I want your prayers for Lori and her family uh, and their health there. But also, uh, we've got some people trying to cover the office, but it'll be different. It's different without Lori there. <laughs> so we want some prayers for that as well. Uh, Esther had an announcement. Are there other announcements or prayer requests as well? Okay. Hello. Nope. Hello. Nope. Uh, so if you are interested in helping with Zion Bible Camp, it's about a month away, um, but we're having a planning meeting this Wednesday, the 19th at 10.30 a.m., uh, in the parish hall meeting room. So if you're interested in either helping plan it or helping just volunteer or just curious about what's going on, feel free to join us and it should be a good time. Great. And we've got some kids from Zion that want to help too. So if you want to help the helpers, <laughs> we'd love to have you. All right. Very good. Our Father's Day theme uh, for the fourth Sunday at Pentecost comes from the readings of being uh, of good courage. Uh, and uh, it's kind of an interesting word to think about and where it puts us uh, in the life of faith. Uh, one of the main reasons why we have courage is because we know our Father God is the one who has uh, made the heavens and the earth and is directing all things towards uh, his purposes. We sing about that in the opening hymn, O God, O Lord of heaven and earth.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways according to the glory. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. The righteous flourish like the palm tree. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They still bear fruit in old age to declare that the Lord is upright. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ. The Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor, glory and might, 
be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from the 17th chapter of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and shall become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. Dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his graces. On your wondrous works I will meditate. And I will declare your greatness. Our epistle reading is from the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. We know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again by giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him 
who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, and he knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parables shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make a nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples he explained everything. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ.
In the name of Jesus. Lord of glory, you have bought us with your lifeblood as the price, never grudging for the lost ones that tremendous sacrifice. Give us faith to trust you boldly, hope to stay our souls on you, but, O oh, best of all your graces, with your love, our love renew. I kind of picture those words in a little bit of a Father's Day picture. I don't know if you've ever had that experience where you've had a bit of a scared child that just comes up to dad and says, can I hold your hand? You take that child in hand and now there's that boldness, that courage, that knowledge of being loved that... Uh, almost can light up a room. What an honor it is to be a father, to share that courage and strength. It's a bit of a mystery. We had in the hymn that thing of about a mystery, mysterious sentence, it's a mystery how much God loves us and all that he has done for us. But as I was thinking about this courage and this boldness that uh, is mentioned there in the epistle lesson, I thought there's two ditches on either side of the road that we sometimes fall into. Either we don't have enough courage and we're afraid, or maybe we become arrogant and go into the other ditch. Sometimes we don't do the good things that we should do, and sometimes we do things beyond what should be done. Sometimes we underreact, sometimes we overreact. There are lots of spectrum type things in the readings for the day or opposites as to where things were at. God calling us to that middle ground, that helpful ground, that walk down the the straight and narrow way. So let's take a look, a little closer look at that epistle lesson, verse 8. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Away or at home? Things bouncing back and forth. You may remember last week I talked about that A, B, B, A, chiastic structure. Well, he did it again here with those words, home and away. He flips them around. Let me read verse 6 again for you. You'll see that he does away. He does it home, away, away, at home. There's your chiasm there. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we should, would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. At home, away, away, at home. And I said the good chiasm ends up pointing us to Christ. In the middle of that away, we walk by faith, not by sight. We are with the Lord, the one who left his home in heaven and became the word that was made flesh among us. He was incarnate for us. He came really present among us. So this is not a text that tells us that this world and everything material is evil and we would seek to be immaterial. It's not that we want to be unburdened from the clothing of this tent, but we want to have the full glory of what God had designed for us in the, the new creation is what underlines this. There are some of those Gnostic-type religions that want you to escape to your head into nirvana, but this text grounds us with Christ there, right in the middle, in the flesh, 
for you. He knows the trials that we face. He knows that on, in this world there are people that play to the outward appearances and disregard the fundamental faith of the heart. What's in the heart? In the scriptures, the heart is that place where we believe in Jesus, where we take his word and make it our own. Where the God of all creation becomes flesh and blood, body and blood for you and for me. In the heart where we believe his word and his word affects who we are. Yet we live in this world that still has that outward appearance of fading away, of destruction and doom. Luther was having a conversation once upon a time, I think it was with a, one of the Benedictine months or something like that, where they were talking about sin. If you remember Luther in his 95 thesis, the first one was that he called us to a life of repentance. It wasn't a one-time thing that we did and we're done with, but it was something that we had to do. And so they were debating the ability to do good works. And supposedly this monk said, well, I do good works all the time. And Luther said, I don't think you can even say the Lord's Prayer without sinning. He said, well, what are you going to put by that? Luther said, I'll bet you my horse, you can't say the Lord's Prayer without sinning. Our Father, who are, what color is the horse? We are so easily distracted by outward appearances because sin is right there at the door wanting to have mastery over us. But we are not afraid. We are not arrogant. But we are of good courage because Jesus is at hand. Jesus who, even while his hands were being nailed to the cross, prayed for our forgiveness. Father, forgive them. Life that changes when we understand the love of God for us, his mercy, all the things that he has given for us, how even with the poor and needy that we see in this world, he's calling us to be more like him, to give as we have been given to, to love as we have been loved. But it's not something that we can do by our own checklist, by our own reason or strength. If we were going to check on the seed that we were buried and see if it's starting to sprout or how deep are the roots now? You know, we'd kill it. We've got to trust that the seed is doing what God designed for it to do. In the same way we take his word into our lives, we believe it. Plant it in our heart and let it do what it's going to do so that we can live it and share it with others. The collect of the day points us to the word. All Holy Scriptures were written for our learning. So we should hear them, read them, mark them, learn them, inwardly digest them and embrace them so that we can ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Good courage hand of the Father, from the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us, from Jesus for you. Amen.
Let us courageously confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And he was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one Christian and half -talk church. I acknowledge baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O God Most High, we give thanks to you for your planted, your holy word among us. Give healthy growth to your church that she may weather the storm winds of this world with good courage in Christ, ever bearing the fruits of love and singing praises to your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Holy Spirit plants your word and causes it to sprout and grow as it pleases you. Bless the preaching and teaching of your word that your kingdom may be extended and give us thankful hearts to marvel at your work. Send faithful laborers into your fields to scatter your seed here and abroad that in due time a harvest may be reaped for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, the great I am, what you have spoken you will surely do. You have promised to hear our prayers, to attend our needs. We pray that you would be with Lori and those in her family that have tested positive for COVID. We ask that you would restore their health and strength and give them many more days to sing your praise. We also pray for the Heike family upon the death of Dale, and we ask that you would help them to walk with you and grieve not as the world does, but as those who have that courageous hope in the new creation. We implore you for the sake of Christ in your many precious promises to bless and defend our homes, to make the efforts of parents fruitful in the teaching of their children, and to preserve them in saving faith, the faith in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we are bold to ask for all things because you have given us your spirit as a guarantee. Hear us as we intercede in Jesus' name for all those in every need. Lord, in your mercy. God of all mercy, through the abundance of your steadfast love, you gather us into your house and to your supper. Give all who commune this day a holy fear of your wrath and faith in your promises that they would receive Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood is named, we give you thanks for earthly fathers. Give them confidence in their station and zeal for their task to care for their families faithfully. Make them examples to their children of godly life and love for your holy word. Bless their work of bringing up children in the fear and instruction of the Lord and give them the comfort of your absolution over all their shortcomings. Gather us together with all our fathers to your eternal household through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. You may be seated.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. This It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking upon the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross, risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us
Take and eat. The very body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given to death for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in body and soul to life everlasting for his peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the very body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all your sin. Take and eat the very body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all your sin. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given to death for you. Thank you. 
lack of the lack of the Parson Smith. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He calls his promises and leads his people forth in love. With shouts of praise be Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Oh, wow.